Hello there and welcome to my wee video about my diesel air and water on demand heater build. Um, my name's Megan, I did an awful lot of research into this system before I started installing it so I thought I'd share the love and post something myself for other people to learn from. So this is a small diesel in here, diesel air and water heating system for a wee camper. It's run off a Webasto Thermotop Evo 5 kilowatt heater. Now the Evo is the current model and it's one that can um, step itself down an output from 2 kilowatts up to 5.5 kilowatts. And my camp is quite wee. It's a bit of a bomb site, still are tools everywhere. But um, it's going to heat me up pretty well. I'll probably be the one that's sitting in the campsites in winter with all my doors and windows and vents open. But um, my heating is in two different heaters that I can turn on and off individually. So the Webasto itself is underneath the truck, it's actually pretty much under my feet and I've got rubber coolant lines that come through under the truck and come through here under the floor. So I'll try doing this top down, it might be a bit easier to follow. So coolant comes in this pipe here, runs along, whoopsie, move that out of the way, runs along, along this pipe here and and comes in here into my plate heat exchanger. Now this is a SWEP model, I'll post the specs. It's the same model as the ones that are sold brand Webasto, but I got it off eBay, it came off the side of a heat pump water heater. Um, so coolant in the bottom, coolant out the top, and then it'll be cold water in the top and hot water hopefully out the bottom and then I'm going to run that through my wee temporary valve. In this void in the back here is where my um, water tank's going to go. So it comes from the heater through the heat exchanger first so I get maximum heat capacity into my hot water. If the hot water's not running then all the heating will go into the two heater units. And I've spent an awful lot of money and time and swearing and um, quite dope stuff on my manifold which is, sorry I'm slightly buried but I've got a couple of elbows, it's all stainless, valves on both of them so I've got to make sure that one or other is on at all times. Oh dear. Yeah. I'll fix that later. So it comes out of the heater Sorry, out of the heat exchanger into this manifold here where it can go to either of the two heaters. This one here is a um, Calori Silencio FAI 1.7 kilowatt and eventually when I build it in this space here is going to be my bathroom. So this is actually going to be ducted. I've just popped the, um, the plate back on the front just to protect my fins because I don't want those to get damaged and bent. So it is eventually going to have this wee plate that I've already made up on the front which is going to have a hole cut in it for a 60mm outlet but I'm still waiting for that flange to arrive from the interweb. So in the meantime, since I'm going to take this thing skiing this week, I'm going to keep that wee cover on it just to protect everything. Right, so that is going to go buy some 60 mil ducting and I'm going to order a rectangular um, heater outlet which is going to go here or somewhere. Toilet's going to be here and shower over here. So that one is intended to run all year round so that'll act as a bit of a drip keep everything dry in the bathroom and it also acts as a bit of a dump load when I'm running the hot water so that it, because these heaters like to work, they don't like to be switched too low, it's not good for them. And then the main heating area, once I close this wee cabinet slash step in, this is the Silencio 2 heater and this one is about 4.8 kilowatts so if I've got them both running it's going to put a decent full load on the heater so I can run them both every so often just to give it a good clean out. And they've both got computer fans on them which I will, oopsie, keep my hand out of the camera until I don't do this much. 
just got some um, computer fans on them. I'll probably run them on low because they're pretty loud on high, but if I need some max heating, that'll be pretty good. So that one through this valve here, if I decide I want to, I can turn off the coolant flow to that one in the summer. So coolant in these comes into the bottom, out through the top, comes back through this joining manifold, that comes up here, goes back into the header tank, and then I've also put a branch in, and that is an automatic air um, bleed valve. So that'll help me bleed the system. And I could possibly have put a tap in that, but I guess it's okay to have it auto bleeding. And then this is just the standard Webasto 5 litre header tank, which I'm going to fill right up. So I've got a, an overflow pipe that I'm also yet to connect up to a bottle. So I just finished putting all this together yesterday and groveling around underneath fitting the heater itself. I can feel it in my stomach muscles today. Um, so the next thing to do is to fill this baby up with coolant, cross my fingers that none of my fittings leak, and um, use the Webasto Thermo, -toss, Thermo Test software to do some testing and fire it up again. So I bought the heater off eBay and when I initially bought it I hooked it up on the bench in the garage with a jerry can of coolant and fired it up to make sure it worked before I spent money buying all these other bits. Um, so the last bit I'll show you is my temporary, because this is all going to be have cabinetry built in here eventually, switch panel. And so the oval timer isn't yet hooked up because I haven't powered up the, um, the heater yet. But if I turn my fans on, so this is the big fan. low so it's not too noisy on high it's a slightly different matter this is high you certainly know that was running but again it'll be good in summer if I need a bit of extra um, cooling going on as well so that's the two fan jobby this is the bathroom one with a single fan it's nice and quiet by the time this um, unit's all closed in you probably hardly hear that and again on high. Yeah, a bit noisier, but again, it'll be good. So in the last piece of the puzzle that I've got to fit, which I'll probably do once I put my cabinetry in, is one of these wee thermostats. Now because my heater is the Thermotop Evo, it's a W-Bus controlled heater. So the older ones, your Thermotop C's and E's and those ones, you can just start with a 12 volt feed on one of the pins. You have your 12 volt positive and negative for your power, and then if you energize another one of the pins, they'll start up. So you can just run them off a switch. So those ones can actually be turned on and off with this puppy. Because um, mine is a W-Bus, it needs the W-Bus signal. So I'd either have to get a W bus analog converter or a thermos uh, a tally start unit. But as far as I've worked out, you can't run both the heater and the fans off this, so I'm going to hook this up to my fans on the low setting and that will turn the fans on and off. Right, I'm going to pause this and I'll grovel under the truck and I'll show you the other end. Shall we digression? So this is the the project, so she's built on a Mitsubishi Triton four-wheel drive with diff lock, so this is going to be a skiing and fishing vehicle. So I'm based here in Christchurch, New Zealand, so currently winter. It's not too cold here in Christchurch, but where I plan to go down to Tekapo and Twizel for skiing and fishing, it can regularly get to minus six frosts, and in a big southerly colder than that. So anyway, under the truck we go flute real estate sign on the driveway very handy for slithering around in and out of here uh, so I've dropped dropped my spare wheel out to give me a bit more room and so there is the heater uh, grovel grovel as I said I spent most of the day under here it felt like yesterday so combustion air exhaust which I have heat fiberglass heat wrapped and it's a reasonable distance away from the fiberglass and ply floor. And I think we should be okay. In that sort of distance. Um, but I can put more, I've got more wrap and I may also just 
to stick another aluminium plate there. So this is the spare wheel carrier. I've just dropped the spare to give me a bit more room. So I've got my diesel pump on there. And that just goes through at the moment into a side locker where I've just got a 5 litre jury can because foolishly I built this camper and didn't really think about um, a diesel heater before I st stuck the camper body on top. Otherwise I would have put a feed into the diesel tank so now I'm going to have to pay someone to drop it. So mm, I'll stick with my 5 litre jury can for now and see how it goes. So these are the coolant lines coming in under the floor. So the feed coming in, sorry it's a bit hard around all the bits, there we go, and that comes to the coolant pump which on this model is separate, it's not attached to the heater, and then this one here is my flow, so this that's returned back into the heater, and this is the flow out of the heater, and I've just put a, a valve there so if I ever need to drain the system it's easy to do so without having to try and pull fittings off. I'll probably put a um, camelot fitting on that. So this is mounted on a about a three or four mil aluminium plate, and that's spaced a centimetre off the off the floor, and then the heat is mounted onto that. And I've also got a um, three more checker plate um, cover that's going to go over the whole thing, and the combustion air is going to attach onto that but I'll fit all that once everything's all up and working. So there's a closer look at the heater, so at the um, muffler, so that's again that's spaced off the chassis rail on a bracket. Oh dear, sorry I've turned the camera around on you haven't I? Whoops. Okay so that's, yeah, there we go, under the truck, the heater itself. So next thing to do is fill her up and cross my fingers. See you.